Um, so welcome everyone to the Two Touch Pod. This is me yourself, E3, and my co-host Kashai. Yeah, back. Perfect. And we have a much anticipated episode today. Yeah. One for the record, one for the history books. Yeah, no, I had to get I had to get this guy on. He has a lot to say, a lot to say, a lot to say. So I'm just ready to let's just go, isn't it? Yeah, most. But definitely. before we start off everything, how how did obviously before thing he's obviously with your business, I would say onside academy. What was life before onside? If you don't mind saying what well, you're doing, I think for me, obviously, th- guys, thank you very much for yeah, inviting no, me. I appreciate it. I think for me, on life before onside was a bit different in it because. Mm-hmm. Um, I was obviously in law enforcement as well. Yeah. I was doing that for a number of years, but also I was an elected uh, politician as well in uh, my local borough of Hackney as well. And then obviously I've been dibbled and dabbled in politics, international yeah. politics. I've been a special advisor to quite a few people as well. And uh, I've worked with quite a few politicians on, on their campaigns as well. Mm-hmm. So obviously that's probably where a lot of my experience come from in terms of organization or getting people where they need to be yeah. uh so yeah um on site isn't my i would say my day to day i think mm. it is now but at that time it wasn't yeah it was just something that kind of happened really okay yeah, no. so you're just a jack of all trades everything yeah, yeah, yeah. well not everything yeah. but like yeah i would say a jack of all trades but for me i like to be i like to be busy yeah. i like to have something doing yeah. And I think for anyone that knows me knows I'm a hard worker, I'm a grafter, yeah, no, and that's the type of person I am. So yeah, yeah. yeah so um, obviously we're gonna see most definitely touch on Onside Academy yeah. and kind of the origin story to it. So mm. kind of tell us a little bit about how it started and obviously how it's you know became as you mentioned yeah. London's leading ID center. Yeah, you know what? Um, so originally there was a player called like Kwame Danso. Um, who was um, who lived on my block okay. um, in Hackney and he on that day I was coming from work it was actually my last day uh, in law enforcement and and I, I was coming to home I had my box in my hand and I was looking forward to my new career in politics um, full time then I saw him and we, if anyone that knows our, my estate is where NSG films all their videos. Okay. They film that. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. everyone that knows, and if you know the Bovo, you know the Bovo. <laughs> yeah. We don't. We uh, yeah, we yeah. have a, we have big like pitches, but it's like it's concrete. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like seeing Kwame now, and Kwame, I've seen him grow up with me. Yeah. So for me, just looking at him, and at 14, like Kwame was like at least six three already. Yeah, no, Kwame you know? is a, he's a tall guy. Yeah, yeah tall yeah. guy. And I saw him, and I'm like, brother, what are you doing, like? What are you doing? You know, why are you playing like on a concrete? Like, why are you not a football club? Now, obviously, at that time, he said, Oh, I play for Shoreditch FC. Now, Shoreditch FC was one of those little local grassroots teams. I won't say serious, in it. You yeah, just nah. go there, do your thing. If yeah. you win the Hackney, Marshes, League Cup, whatever, then, you know, God bless you, in it. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? So, I tell him, in it, I just told him a white lie. That was the white lie. I told him, Oh, don't worry, um, I'll send you to a club. And then I said, and I just went home. Like, about 48 hours later now, I get a knock on my door. Kwame is there. And he's like, oh, Alex, yeah, you said you were going to take me to a club. Will you take me to a club? In my head, I'm thinking, ah, now I have to actually do it. I was just trying to, you know, trying <laughs> to boost the, the kids' morale. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. don't worry. So, ah, man, I went on Google. And I'm like, obviously, I didn't have no contacts back then. Didn't know anybody yeah. in the football. I went on Google and, like, I saw something called UK Football Trials. Hmm. And then I see UK Football Trials and, obviously, I see, like, certain scouts that go there, whatever. So I remember, I think, at that time, I think I paid about £80, pound, £80 pound for him to, like, go. And then I kind of, like, took him there. When I took him there now... I remember we were walking, everyone was just looking at like Kwame, like 14 year old, six foot three, left footed. Come on, now, now me being a scout now, I realize how precious. Yeah, left footed center Yeah, well. left center back, and he's six, three at 14. Yeah. Like it was amazing. So, cut long story, he did quite well in the trials, and I think he got picked up from Crystal Palace, West Ham, and all of that. But then, what also happened as well was I also contacted a West Ham scout off LinkedIn. Okay. So when I did that, 
he then invited him for like um, I think at that time they called it a talent ID it's not a mm. game talent ID development centre and all of that okay, yeah. and I don't think he was there for up to two sessions they just offered him a a a six week at the time so six yeah. week trial and then he did quite well and then I think it was like we played Redin and Redin I remember he played, he had a good game to be fair. And we were walking in a car park at, at West Ham and I get approached by a uh, Reading um, scout who was like, really, really like him, can we bring him in? I was like, yeah, cool. But then on that same day in the car park, there was a Crystal Palace yeah. scout as well, yeah. who also was very interested in Kwame. So obviously I told Kwame wasn't kind of like feeling West Ham, like he just wasn't, the vibe wasn't there. So yeah. I told him like, look, what do you want to do? So we went to Reading for like one day and then after it was like a talent ID game then Crystal Palace just came out of nowhere boom there you go you know we want to give you a, like a six week trial so obviously he cancelled it went to Crystal Palace had a trial mm -hmm. and uh, eventually got signed so that was like kind of my first real, real signing mm -hmm. what I didn't know in the meantime was that I've kind of opened the Pandora's box because as soon as he got signed everybody else in the ends kind of decided to come to me, or oh, can you help me? This is what it is, this is what it's all about. Yeah. Rare, 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 tear, tear, tear. So we started it and I and I, I was training a couple of players from Hackney that I thought were good at the time. I could I'll be honest, I didn't know what levels were. I just yeah. thought, okay, these are talented footballers. Yeah. And then we uh, we we originally called ourselves the Hackney Trialist. Okay. That was what on before onside was onside, it was called yeah. the Hackney Trialist. And it was just a couple of kids from Hackney. And I remember we had, we, I back then I didn't know how to book a pitch yeah. in Haggerston. Yeah. We would literally sometimes jump over the pitch, cut a hole in the in the pitch to get in. Sometimes one of the idiots would go and jump over and break <laughs> the thing, yeah. open it for everybody to go out. And we will train in like a, if we had the whole pitch, amazing. Yeah. If we if we didn't have the pitch and like it was booked out by all these little five a side tournaments that they yeah. do in Haggerston football pitch, yeah. there'll be like a small space. We had the small corner. And I after this, I will actually I've still got the footage. Yeah. You'll see it's a real small corner of the pitch. Literally I don't think you could fit ten people. But one thing we did was I just kind of like orchestrated training. Yeah. And I think looking back at it it was probably the best experience we can do because we didn't have a full pitch. We didn't have a half pitch. We didn't even have a seven side. We didn't even have four side. Yeah. It was just a one little square side yeah, yeah, no. at the end of the pitch. Yeah. So it was not even on the end of the pitch. And we were doing like one-on-ones and stuff like that. We were doing touch tights. We were doing, you know, receive, play, move, and however. Not knowing that actually the adversity that we had from not having a big pitch and all of that kind of helped us out exactly. because players that weren't technical eventually became technical yeah, you exactly. know when you saw players like Ezra um, I don't know if you know Ezra yeah, no, no. Ezra like taller like me now he was good but he had a few issues he needed to work on he yeah. became technical very quickly so we kind of just made something oh, out of I mean, nothing yeah most definitely and, and that was it really and it of course I could go on and on about it but I'm sure the questions will come through. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, I, have a, I have a question. See, at that time where you got Kwame, that six-week trial, did you think, like, wow, like, I'm actually an agent, not even an agent, or I'm actually helping someone get into a club or making their dreams, I'm helping them. Like, I'm, do you, did you think you was an agent at that time? I think because I knew Kwame growing up yeah. in terms of him being a kid on my estate, yeah. I felt I, I owed it to him because I kind of promised him that, oh, you know, yeah. I didn't really was going to help him with a yeah. club. I was just, as an adult, yeah. boosting the guy's morale. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. So when he come and knock on my door, and it's quite funny, he comes and knock on my door. His two other brothers have benefited from me and they've knocked on my door. Yeah. I've had, you know, I've had to help them. I've yeah. had to give them some sort of avenue. So I didn't see myself as an agent or whatever. Yeah. I just saw myself as like an older brother from the ends that genuinely wanted to help yeah, Kwame. Yeah. And that was kind of it, really. Yeah, no, no, definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, obviously, kind of you kind of touched on the origin of how it started for you, mm. obviously kind of helping someone out. And then obviously that's obviously grown as time has gone on. So like, let's touch a little bit more about how, you know, you've had a number of people from a range of age ranges to go to different clubs. How has that been in terms of the experience where 
now you've kind of almost built a name for yourself and obviously yeah. a brand for yourself. So how have you kind of maintained that? Yeah, I think sometimes that we're a victim of my own success mm. because the problem is, is that I started with a Hackney try list. Yeah. Then we kind of offici officially called it Onside Sports. Then we went to Onside Football. Then we went to Onside Academy. And it was all about trying to capitalize on what we were trying to do. And I'll keep it real with you. Like, yeah. At that time, I didn't know what a showcase academy was. Yeah. I, I was just a couple of kids from Hackney, just wanted to help them out, give them opportunities. Some I took to UK football trials, yeah. some I said, look, there's an opportunity. And I went on LinkedIn, trying to catch speak to scouts yeah. and stuff like that. But for me, the success came from the players itself. Mm. They made it who it is. Yeah. I remember one of the best games I've ever, ever, ever fit, like been part of as a as an onside director, manager, whatever, was the Leicester City tournament against Onside Academy versus East Soccer Base. I tell you that now, probably one of the best games I've ever played. That was when I. That's when East London, in terms of footballers, I I knew there were ballers there. Mm -hmm. Can't say it now, but at that time, East Soccer Base, they were like the prime yeah, movers, no, yeah, yeah. prime movers of players from East London. You don't go on, on you don't get into East Soccer Base when you're shit, do you yeah, get what I mean? Yeah. You look at like people like Mass Elite, they were very, very good, very strong in West London. Mm. You look at North London, we didn't really have that much in North London, but there was stuff there. Mm. So for me, what I was doing at, of, when I was creating Onside was taking good things from different showcase academies and making it into my own. Yeah. So what I've done is that I said, oh, I don't like what they've done there. Mm, I'm not gonna take that. Oh, I like what they've done there. You know, I look, I, I don't know how much you know about me and XYZ. Me and XYZ, we've fallen out. But mm. he had some stuff that I really liked. Yeah. I liked his branding. So what I decided to do, I said, look, we're gonna focus a bit on branding. Mm that one of the things I wanted to focus on was commercialization, mm. trying to get ensure that the kids don't have to pay for training. They don't have to pay for anything yeah. because actually our commercial partners will be able to sponsor that, yeah, exactly. you know? So for me, I was just taking things from different people, listening to what scouts are saying because scouts used to, I'll tell you this now, mm. before Onside came in the game, the showcase industry was disgusting. No, it was, <laughs> it was you, you could literally you could turn up yeah. Anyhow, whatever, anyhow, what, what anyhow, time. your bed would be like this. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like people don't yeah. care. People look like they've just come out of bed. Yeah, you it's see, crazy. you see no two shin pads. Yeah, no, no shin pads. No, no, you no. see two, you see two kids. Two kids that are ballers. Everybody else is shit. Yeah. Everyone they've t taken 30, 40 quid to play. Um, you have a you have a scenario like this where you turn up. Some people have shirts. Some people don't have shirts. Mm, Socks yeah. the wrong way round, and all that. And I saw that from different showcase academies. You know. So one thing I said to myself was, I'm going to invest mm. in my academy. I'm going to invest in the players, and I'm also going to have coaches that also share the same mindset that I do. Look. Obviously, along the way, you're going to get hate for what you do no. because you're showing people out. You're showing people that, ah, this is the way of doing things. If you don't want to confirm, conform, that's your business. Yeah. But for me personally, I wanted us to have the best. Mm. When we traveled to games, we traveled in a minibus mm. or we traveled in a coach. We never took train because what I said was that I believed in unity of the players together. Mm. Some of, I used to spend my own money on, my, on the players. Okay. I still do to today. But I enjoy doing it because I know that I know what I'm festering and what I'm creating here. And the reason why a lot of showcase academies fail in the first two years is because they refuse to invest. You can't keep taking money from players knowing full well that those players are not good enough. You take them to offset your cost, that's your business. But where Onside has been very successful is we don't drop our standards. Mm. Yeah. We have a standard, you meet it or you don't. Yeah. I'm sorry if it sounds brutal. I'm sorry if I trigger your mental health. That's just the reality. No. Yeah. You have to meet the standards. That's the reason why people say it's difficult to get into onside. I'm sorry, we're not cocky. We're not, we're not trying to spoil your career. We're not trying to tell you you can't have a football career. But the reality is, is that I can't watch you in the eye, know that you're not good enough and still trying to boost you. Oh, don't worry, carry on. Yeah. No, no, no. We have a standard. Onside is free. You have to meet that standard. If you don't, then that's where the door is. Yeah, yeah. most definitely. So... With okay, so cool. Let's just talk about how you get people into trials and get them into clubs and that. How do you how do you feel the academy system is now? Because you are like I don't know what it, you are your shock like your showcase academy. But how do you feel about the academies in general? Just how the academy system is, how it works, the process, and how even just how they release players and 
what happens after. Like, just just expand on that. Yeah, look, look. Academies will always be there in it. Football clubs yeah. are business. Of course, yeah. And they like the player. They don't like the player. Mm. Is that uh, that's it? Yeah. For me personally, I know as someone who's has been a scout, someone who's worked in that field, I will tell you this now. Football teams know who they want to push and who they don't want to push, yeah. okay? So I, I said an example off camera earlier. I said, some of the techiest ballers we've played with in the ends, mm. five, six years down the line, they're no longer in football. The players that are seem to do well are always the certain players. Certain players who understand that football is a business. Mm. So I'm just going to use these two names. Please do not take it literally or say whatever, but I'm just trying to make yeah, it no, out. But I'm gonna, I want to be specific, yeah? No, yeah? Speak, speak, because yeah. a lot of these problems happen with BAME communities. Yeah, mm. no, I speak on it. Alfie, Jerome, okay? So yeah. I'll use those two. Those what comes into my head. Alfie is under 12 and Jerome is under 12. Jerome's technical from the end. Knows the wheeler dealer. He can score four goals, eyes closed. Everything's going well for him. They push him up to under 13s. Oh, doing well. Push him up to under 14s. Oh, da 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 da. There you go. You get England. Alfie is not there yet. Mm. However, Christmas time come. Alfie's mum. Thank you very much for looking after Alf Alfie. Thank you for being so nice to him. Thank you, coach. Have a bottle of wine. Oh, you know, thank you very much. There you go. Oh, we heard it's your birthday. Have a card. You know, Christmas card. Jerome's parents. Bye bye. See you next weekend. Or see you. See you <laughs> the following week. <laughs> bye bye. Christmas come. Merry Christmas, coach. Yeah. Alfie's mum getting a little present for the coach, whatever. <laughs> now we're going to fast forward now. Under 16 come. Yeah, mm. Jerome is doing well. He's scoring goals. He's that guy. Everybody gasses him. He's that guy. You the, he then gets his scholar. Alfie, who technically. Maybe not the greatest, physically not the greatest, but then all of a sudden, they all come, coaches come into a meeting, you know, Alfie works hard, you know, we should give him a chance, give him a chance, let's just give him a chance. I think, you know, maybe two years he can go out and develop and stuff like that. Under 18 has come, Jerome, maybe he had, he, he slowed down a bit, but still performing. All of a sudden, they say, Jerome, sorry, unfortunately, we're going to release you. Alfie, he gets a three-year deal. Alfie works hard during during uh, pre-season, starts filling out a bit, maturation's getting better. All of a sudden, he's got a three-year deal. And then all of a sudden, within 18 months in the first team, making his debut. Jerome, who we've gassed from the ends, from under 12, all of that lot, mm. over year has gone from up and has come down. Now, People at home can say whatever they like and say I'm stereotyping. That's the reality. Mm, and you and I know there are players in some play, even players at Palace. And I worked at Palace for a mm. bit. And I've seen how they've gone like that and they come straight back down. Yeah. I've seen that with other ends. And it's always the same type of play. Oh, the techiest baller, this and that. Oh, amazing. They gas them up because it's something a bit different. And for me, people talk about release. Yeah. I feel that players from BAME communities suffer the most when it comes to being released. Because I find is with them, naturally, if you've come from an end, if you come from an estate where everybody in that estate is either useless or some people are successful, that footballer has that comfort blanket of come back to the ends. Hey, what well, we saw you. You know, one of your biggest celebrity moments, as any footballer will say, is UFA Fake Cup. Yeah. Because that's the first time people will see you on TV. Yeah, no. And people say, we gas, hey, that's that's Johnny. Hey, that's my boy, that's my guy, yeah. that's my guy. You come back to the ends after scoring UFA Fake Cup against Morecambe. <laughs> You're there, everyone's smiling. Yeah, that's my guy. Do you know what I mean? You're getting, remember, we're from the ethnic minority. So you're getting little money here and there. Money is coming to your pocket. You're that guy. You're wearing yeah. Canada goose. You know, you're there. They do swagger. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> Don't we see it? 100%. Yeah. But then the reality is, is that that kid two years two years, no four years on, sometimes he is four years on, he gets released. That shame of coming back to ends with nothing is difficult for a lot of yeah, black no, but uh, Just the thing, I'm just saying, a lot of my friends that went to digs, let's just say they left school because they're in like year nine or mm -hmm. year 10, they go digs. 
But I'm thinking they're working their asses off, like they're going and training, they're putting in work. So when they tell us like they didn't get the 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 scholar or they didn't get the um, professional contract, I'm thinking they've put in so much work. Like how could they release him? Mm. I'm thinking he's good. He's the best. He works the hardest. Mm. And when they get released and he tells us this, it's like. What are they not seeing? It's like that's what I'm trying to say. With that, yeah. what are they not seeing? Because I've seen it. Obviously, I'm not a scout. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like when they tell us, I feel bad. I'm thinking, mm. what they're just it, quickly. I just say, oh, they're racist or whatever. Can I be honest with you? Mm. I personally think it's the region that we're in. Okay. If you if 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 you get listen in Middlesbrough, do they have techie bowlers? They don't. No. They have hard working players. Yeah. So if you bring and that's the reason why they have a lot of black kids up there or kids from the from London mm. because the players that are coming they bring something different to their team. But let's say you got a player that's at Crystal Palace. Palace can release five players that are technical, this and that because guess what? They can get another five down the road. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You don't have to look far. And I also find that some of the players, I feel that they sign for the badge and they don't sign. They don't look at mm. the clubs they're signing at. Okay, for me, true. it's not about the badge at the end of the day because that plays a part. And obviously you can't help where you sign mm. at, at under nine. You know, you just, you see your, your local club. But the reality is, is that a lot of our players get too gas too quickly. Mm. I feel a lot of them stop working. Yes, they might be going digs, going to the gym and stuff like that. But how many of them actually sit down and watch their game? Mm. watch the game back when they do analysis not for you to pick out your best goals oh do you see how I scored the goal from a halfway line and this is where the problem I have no offence to rising ballers and all of that you gas these players up but where are you when those players get released exactly yeah yeah. you gas these players I sometimes I I work oh my god he scored 8 goals that's cool but I've seen you back up this guy 4 years ago he's released now are you, are you giving an internship at your work? Yeah. You've just, you know, I get we're trying to showcase be content creators and all of yeah. that. But the reality is, let these kids work. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Let them work. And yeah. then when they work, then it becomes, then we can start talking, okay, let's, you know, let's give them some praise. Do you get what I mean? Because it's difficult, man. It's difficult to break in as a footballer. Yeah, uh, they say 0.01, whatever it is. We can even be 1%, I don't care. Mm. It's difficult. 100%. And I always find that the, the, what the, how the agenda has changed is... You're now seeing the players that are tactically aware, players that are hardworking, the technical side of things is a plus. That's what I see now. You're seeing players from the non-league coming through now. Mm. Now, when I first started, I'll be honest with you, I was when I see a 16-year-old go, oh, I'm going non-league, I'd be like, you mad, like, do you know what I mean? Forget non-league, go to college and go and study law. Yeah. But now, I've changed my mindset over a couple of years. I'm now saying go non-league yeah. because the learning that I'm seeing, the players that I'm seeing coming from non-league, are even some better than some of the academy players. At this season itself, I'm trying to look at academy players to form an under-19s under team. They were the worst of the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> some of them have even come from Category 1 clubs. Damn. And they're shocking. And I'm like, and some of you have been in the academy for five, six years? Why mm-hmm. are they teaching you? Yeah. We're like, what, what, what's, what's in your psyche? Like, no, do you get true. what I mean? You know. And the players that I'm seeing performing are the ones that are in non-league. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes you can't blame the clubs, these academies, for releasing them. Yeah. If if you work hard, you will get your reward. Even if you don't work hard and you get released, there's always somebody that will open the door for you. Yeah. But I feel that a lot of footballers these days, they don't want to work hard. They think they're working hard. How yeah. many of them are doing extras? How many of them are, you know, when people do this one-on-one training, I hate, can I be honest with you? I hate one-on-one training. Mm. I hate one-on-one training that don't make sense. <laughs> Yeah, you're a defender. You're doing little this and that, doing all these like ball mastery or whatever. Duh, duh, duh. For me personally, you want to be getting the one v ones right. You want to be knowing your five Ds. You want to be heading right. You want to be doing role specific mm. training, not general one on two. And you head, you see one coach, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, pass it to me, yeah. Yeah. And then and then you wonder why. Do you know what I mean? And people say, oh, I do one on one training. How many of you guys do extras? Like those key things are so important. Though. Yeah, it kind of answers the question that um, obviously a couple of our viewers actually gave to us, which we obviously appreciate. Um, and we kind of touched on it a little bit just now. Um, why do you think there is like a, a kind of not noticeable rise, but a number of people, especially from the ends that we're from? Um, why is there a number of them obviously kind of falling away at the, you know, at the side and getting released at the 21s or the 19 stage like what do you think your personal opinion oh, is f- for me I'll tell you this now under 21 football is a sack of shit 
Mm. Is a sack of shit. If you get if you get a contract for under twenty ones, if you don't break through in the first eighteen months, find something else to do in your life. I, I keep a river. I'm sorry, but that's yeah. just the reality. Yeah. It is one of the most boring football matches to ever watch under twenty ones. And on top of that, if you're in a team that you look in front of you, there there's four people ahead of you, and there is no movement. Ask your agent to send you out on loan or find yeah. somewhere else to go or yeah. go go to university. Because the way I see it is, I might sound cynical, but it's it's difficult. It's a difficult industry to kind of like yeah. break into. So to answer your question, for me personally, you just have to kind of make the right choices that actually will benefit you in terms of football. Yeah. And sometimes it will go in your favor and sometimes it just wouldn't. And I've been in situations where I've had to advise players, bro, like go non-league. No, no, I, I want to go on back to under 21s. Bro, go non-league. And some it's worked for them. And some that decided they want to go, they've wasted two years. I know of a player that's 24 and he's still playing under 23s football, under 21s football. Like yes. when when does the switch go in your brain that, yeah. that you have no future at this club? Yeah. yeah. But because they've given them this guy 6K a week, the lifestyle, the money, that's it. You see a lot of Chelsea ballers back in the day who couldn't move on or go on loan because of the money they were earning. Yeah. Just the way it is. It's true. But um yeah, you talked about the XYZ Academy. Yeah. And I think everyone wants to hear what is what is the problem? What happened with them and onside and XYZ? Hey, this one, this one. <laughs> this one, you this one. Hear? This one everyone wants to hear it, isn't it? Yeah. Look, when you start a showcase academy, yeah. Yeah. Let me just say actually, let me just keep it real. What I'm gonna say, I don't fear anybody in it. Do you get what I mean? Me, I'll talk what I'm gonna say. When I let me repeat it again, I know they fear anybody. Mm. I will say what I have to say. Yeah. And I will be honest with you, in terms of XYZ, me and me and Lai were cool. We were cool. I played the I played a match with him at Hackney Hackney Mably many years ago. We were cool. Though and then I've always kind of like been cool with him. I spoke to him and all of that. But then I think it was like kind of moving a bit off. But I didn't really understand it up until when I received the phone call. I received the phone call by a Tottenham scout who basically just moved to Tottenham and said, look, um, bro, um, I've, I've, I'm now at this club. I want to do like a under, I think at the time, an under 15s um, tournament. Can you bring some players? I'm like, bro, everybody knows onside. We don't do 15s. We do 16s upwards, innit? So I said, oh, I don't. But, but a couple of months earlier, I experimented on an under um, 14s. Okay. And some of the players in the under 14s were mostly from South, a couple of people from East, but they're mostly from South. Yeah. They all came through the trial day. They came through the trial day. They did well. And then I did it. But at that time, the market wasn't really there for 14s. And I can't lie, I was juggling by myself because I didn't have the coaches that I do now. Yeah. By that time, I couldn't I couldn't jug the 16s and the 14s together. So I kind of like say, look, guys, do your thing. Next season, when you're under 15s, I'll bring you in and then you can complement our under 16s team. And what we do is do like a transition. So yeah, when yeah. it's your time, boom, you're good to go. So obviously back to back to the tournament now, I've then gone a holler to those players, innit? Not yeah. knowing that some of those players have been uh, uh, have been at XYZ or were at XYZ or still at XYZ. Okay. So I've called I've called some of them. Some of them, yeah, Alex, I'm coming. I'm like planning the squad and all of that now. And then a couple of the players are like dropping out or say, Alex, I've got a problem. I say, what's the issue? Yeah, yeah. It was like, oh, um, Lai wants to hear, um, us to 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 play for him. And I'm like, okay, cool. All right, well, it's up to you, innit? Make your choice, whatever. Is is a is a you know we're on side. This is who we are. Okay, of course, I will sell myself. I said this is what we're about. We're good. People know us and whatever. The, the, and I feel that at that time we were, I would say, making a, a bit of noise at the moment. Yeah. So it was it. And like I said, when you run a showcase academy, it's tough because you will have enemies along the way. Yeah. No one will like you, especially if it involves players, if it involves their grassroots clubs and all of this. So obviously now life was just moving like crazy, calling the parents, calling the kid. 
it was borderline threatening. And mm-hmm. I and I always say this, no one owns the players. If the players mm-hmm. want to go play there, they play there. Till now, you have players that play four or five showcase academies. That's their business. I don't yeah. I don't give a fuck. Do you get mm-hmm. what I mean? And he was just moving mad. So a couple of players dropped out, played for him. We went to the tournament and we were pants and we weren't good like yeah. I, and i i knew before the game we weren't good and we got smashed like when i say we got smashed like we got smashed and xyz beat us but i just didn't think like i had the issue with me so i came and i shaked his hand and i remember he looked at me and said that's what you get from trying to steal our players that's what you get from steal my players mm. then he started this barrage of like social media attacks on us mm. where they were celebrating and they were doing the little selfies and doing all the this whatever and they were just like say onside K yeah, all of this like digs and stuff yeah. Like that. yeah yeah did you get to see it did you see yeah, it yeah no I saw the digs and yeah, yeah like it was, it was like yeah. pretty rad so as a man I holler I think I said bro like you won congratulations on your tournament whatever not in this I try to shake your hand I don't know what the issue is yeah. but then bro like just calm your guys down in it mm. and then what happened was he also had a partner as well at that time who I don't think no longer works with him because of his child's attitude but again at that time <laughs> at that time I had to, I reached out to him I said bruv like what you're doing ain't right do you yeah. get what I mean like just tell him to calm down a bit celebrate your win that's cool we don't care about that yeah. whatever so he just ignored me and then just started doing it. Then he just started a barrage of abuse and all of that. So obviously me, I will send for him as well. Mm. I'm a type of person, I will send for you. Mm. And my following is high. If I send for you, you'll go viral. <laughs> so I sent for him, he sent for me, I sent for him. So cut long story short, to see how low this brother is, yeah? I was working at Manchester United as a scout for like London and South East. He then contacted my United and basically said that, that I was... Um, mentally abusing kids and psychologically abusing kids and selling dreams to kids and stuff like that and he said that and for me it became it went from I won't say a joke to something I didn't take serious to something I take serious yeah, that's when that's, I knew I said yeah. okay rah like okay I you're can see you're, like, you're affecting my work now yeah like, you're now you affecting my work yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. so you're affecting my work so this is the type of person you are mm. and he was still carrying on with the abuse online doing this remember you doing this and he was t- taking, making caricature of me yeah. sending for, he did everything that he wanted to do I kept quiet but I'll send him from mm. the behind the scenes yeah. so I didn't say nothing in it. I just kept my mouth quiet yeah. bear in mind I've got receipts on the guy Mm. If I if I expose him today, he's finished. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought, let me see. You know, let me just keep it, keep yeah, it, keep it cool, keep it cool. Do my thing in it. Yeah. I reached out to him. Even after all of that, I reached out. I said, "Look, we're all men here. Let's have a conversation. Let's sit down. We play a game. We, whoever wins, whatever, we shake hands. We let it go." I've had issues with um, uh, people in the past with other showcase academies because of my morals, and I've had issues. I've had issues where I'm even wrong. You know, I we had the, I had the issue with ESB. We played the match. We shaked hands on it. It was a misunderstanding, not from my, not for me. It was something from our previous social media handler who said something that wasn't right. Yeah. You know, there was many things. So you know, and I'm a type of person. I like peace in it. So I'm like I shake, but this guy weren't willing yeah, to no. do it. So if Mary and mine, you try to affect my job and try try get me sacked one. Then on top of that, you then basically cut coming for me and stuff like that, trying to do all this. Then I remember like the whole trying to call me an exposer and all of this. Mm. Then there was another um, issue whereby he would do this, whereby he um, he didn't like players coming to onside for trial. So one mm. year, I made sure that even players that that were X Y Z will come to me. I opened the trial day. I already knew they were going to come because they already said they were coming. And in space overnight, he lost all these players straight away. And, I, and, I, and, that was, and that's the power that we had. Do you mm, get what I mean? Yeah. I don't enjoy doing it. Of course, but yeah. I just had to tell him, teach him a lesson that, look, nobody, you be your guy. Now mm. we be your guy. We've been here. We know yeah. how things are. You can't, I don't go by success. I don't go by, or oh, how many players I signed. I just go by, how are we creating opportunities for he, for kids? But for him, he's been so horrible. Like yeah. he's he's one of the most even scouts that speak to me all around. They said, "Look, is this guy okay? Is he well? Why is he childish?" And what saddens me the most was that there was a friend of mine who was a scout. Uh, who his was a scout, Charlton. Our name is his name is Patrick. Who I was close with, not knowing that Patrick was also feeding the fire 
between me and Lai because now him, Patrick and Lai now work together at XYZ. By that okay. time, he would call me, oh yeah, this is what Lai said. This is the gossip going on. This is what being said. I'm hearing it. I'm like, bruv, that, you know, so I'm giving, not knowing that yeah. the guy was talking the fight. Yeah, like he was that. playing both sides. Yeah. So obviously I knew that, and, and people warned me about Patrick, that the guy's a snake, but mm. I like to see the best in people. Yeah, but the guy's a snake, and also Lai is also a dick. And that was it, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And, and till today, and this has been going on what, six, 2017. Mm. Mm. And we still not blessed it. Still, yeah, we right. still not blessed it's it. Crazy. So you can understand that's why. Look, I can say many things of what he's done. I can expose the guy today. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's, it's like for him, he's trying to fake it before he can make it. Yeah. But the reality is, I learned from you. Mm. Remember, yeah. I said this. I didn't. If I was proud, I would say. I did. Remember, I said at the beginning. I said yeah. I learned from different yeah. showcase academies. Yeah. Equally, I learned from X Y Z. Branding wise, they were quite good. But guess what? I smacked them out of the park. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've done that. But he's a horrible person. And for him. Like people said, do you forgive him? I forgive him. But what he's done is so disgusting mm. that I wouldn't do that to him. Even when they exposed him about him going to go around looking for sex sex workers and all of that. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Right. There were many things he got exposed on. Exactly. Or, or listen, it's quite funny. You're like, let's talk about it. His followers now. Yeah. Let's talk about Instagram followers. Your Instagram followers overnight went from went from 7,000 to 15 to 30. Yeah. We've got the receipts. If we put it out, you'll be shamed. He's buying, he's buying them. Um, yeah. Buying, buying free, followers. Free. But I didn't, I mean, well, listen, I could easily if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I don't, it's, it don't bother me. Do yeah. your thing, innit? Mm. I know what I'm doing I know the organic thing I'm you know you're not on a different level to us yeah. I'm not trying to compare myself to you but when you decide that you want to continue to be rude and you bring my work into it and you try to be or be horrible and some of the players and if you see what he does to other players it's not nice no. and that's the thing yeah like I realised that being what being in the being part of a showcase academy is difficult because you have to keep everybody happy yeah. and he's he, he's just learned to keep everybody unhappy with him mm. and I wish him well but like I said I know they fear him if he mm. wants to come and talk to me as a man I'll shake his hand we'll bless it if he wants to act like a dickhead then we'll do <clears throat> fire with fire that's fine well um yeah Larry you heard what Alex said <laughs> bruv the, uh, li, li knows Lai knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. Fighting words. Fighting words. He, know, he knows. He knows. Well, the problem is from from day one, he's never said what I've done. Mm. Yeah. I know what I've done, and it was the Tottenham tournament because that's when he started moving off. Yeah. So at the end of the day, be a man. Come sit with me. Let's have a conversation. You yeah. want to do it publicly? We we'll do it publicly. Yeah, Remember what's hey. that? What's that song going? If you want to go band for band, yeah, yeah? <laughs> M for M. Yeah. yeah, I'm ready for you. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not yeah. a problem. Do you know what I mean? I'm a big guy. Yeah. I'm a big guy. Forget about football. I'm a big guy. Generally mm. in public. I've met people he would never meet in his life. Mm. It's not me trying to be big or anything. It's just the fact that I've worked hard for whatever I've achieved. Yeah. So let's come together and do something positive. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, hey, this is the perfect platform. If he wants to come on, come his... sit there, sit yeah. there, empty. Ready, yeah, we're like ready. 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 We'll talk. Gloves are off. That's, That's it. Sense. Most definitely. Um, but oh, another thing I actually wanted to kind of touch on, uh, we spoke about a little bit off camera was the. Uh, Agents. So you said the kind of like your opinion on agents and certain things that they do. Um, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. You said that the player doesn't work for the agent. It's the agent kind of working for the player. So kind of like touch on and about in your opinions on. For for me, look look. I will say this. I will say this. I will say this for fact. Yeah. And I'm directing this at black ethnic players. You guys need to pattern up with your with, with your agents, man. Mm. Like I feel they just they they pick the wrong agents because the problem is is that you you will never see like a white player be taking orders from an agent. The 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 the, the agent is there to give you advice. Yeah. You either take it or not. It is on your head. But you see like black players. Oh, my agent said I can't do this. My agent said I can't train with you. My agent says this. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Get out of here, man. Yeah. They're not they're not that guy. It's it bro, look, the, no, I you can't. It's just it's yeah. plain stupid. Yeah. Your agent works for you. And this is and it always seems to be with the with the and that's why I, a lot of black footballers always seem to be very unsuccessful mm. when it comes to picking their agents. Because at the end of the day, they will come in they will woo you. There will some agents will give you money. Your parents have never seen ten thousand before. Oh, sign my son. Go take him away. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it goes wrong. You start going back to the guy who helped your son to get into a club. Say, oh, you know, Tunde, you are a good man. I'm sorry. Yeah. This and that. It happens. 
yeah. And for me, yeah. picking the right agent means that mute, there's a mutual respect and understanding. Mm. And when I speak to players that, look, I'm not agent, but I, I give a lot of advice to players mm. who have agents and who don't. And I give a, a, advice to players that are on side. I always told them, we can go and be having argument. I like that. I'll give you my opinion. You can say your opinion. Yeah. And then look, whether or not it's, it's nothing personal. And I think as agents, I think I think we kind of, I would say, taking on the role of mummy and daddy, social worker, yeah. therapist, concierge, yeah. personal shopper, uh, contract guy. We, you've t- and and people are just adding on to the role. My role is to make your life comfortable. Yeah. I will give you the best advice. You either take it or not. Yeah. Even as even as on side, I've had to let people go because I said, look, we're not sinking. I can see it's not working. All the best. I wish you all the best. And that's yeah. the best thing. Some agents will fuck you over. No. If a player wants to leave, goodbye. Yeah. Because I, I feel that there's no point keeping an unhappy player in your stable that doesn't want to play ball. And I feel that, and this goes to, to the black footballers, mm. don't get gassed because you've got an agent. That's mm, one. Yeah. Two, realise very, very quickly, all this endorsements, all this football endorsements, your agent doesn't get you the football endorsements. You mm. you get yourself the football endorsements. Exactly. If you're good, if you're playing for England, if you're doing the right thing, if you're making noise, they will come to you. It just happens to be that sometimes they have to stumble past your agent to get to you. If you don't have an agent, they'll go through the club mm. and go to you. Exactly. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, the, what's the expectation of a 70-year-old that wants a football agent? What do you want the agent to do for you? Oh, buy me boots. Is that your life? <laughs> is that the life Is that the life that will excite you? Oh, yeah. my agent buys me boots. So that makes him a great agent. Oh, my agent gave me 5,000. Okay, cool. I've seen agents that give money and all of a sudden you 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 get released, they don't pick up their phone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the worst things for me is always the big agencies. The big agencies when you're popping, ha, ah, you get the world. When you're not popping, automatically you become very relevant. They don't pick up your phone. Yeah. All of a sudden, you pick them up. Oh, I'm just a bit busy at the moment. I'll call you back like in five minutes. Five minutes become one hour. They don't pick up. Mm-hmm. So the reality I always tell players, yeah, pick the right agent. They work for you. Yeah. Have a conversation with them. Have that mutual ground. Stop doing auntie and uncle. Oh, he's my uncle, this and that. <laughs> my, oh, my, he's my brother. No, he he is, he is. Um, the person that you've chose to represent you. There is no uncle, auntie, all of that. Keep the respect mutual. You can have a brother relationship, whatever. But when it comes to business, I feel that a lot of agents these days have become a bit too comfortable. Mm, yeah, you know definitely. what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And for me, I like to keep the strictly business. We can talk. I banter with everyone knows I'm the probably the most mm. funniest guy. I banter with everybody, but I like to keep it business, business. Yeah? yeah. And if you want to do pleasure out of there, do pleasure out there. Yeah, no. definitely. So I just got. I, just to, I just got some questions, so cool. it's, not, it's not quick fire, but it's just a couple questions. So, mm. who's the your standout player, or who's your favorite player you've seen come out of onside? Because these going to be tough questions, but yeah. I think these ones are good. Who's your favorite? If you like, well, give me top three if you can't do one. <sighs> top three has to be Yaku Trore. Okay. I think he has to be one of the biggest ones for me because if I tell you the story about how. <laughs> I still laugh about it. Bro, the brother hollered at me via snap saying he wants to come to a trial day. I told the guy to fuck off. <laughs> I genuinely told that's the first one I told him to fuck Because yeah. he was rude. Like yeah. he just said he said, Oh, I hear you man are having a trial day. I'm coming through. I'm like, no, I'm one of the best players you ever see. I told him to fuck off. I hear that all the time. Do you know what I mean? I didn't even invite him and he just turned up at a yeah. trial. Fucking hell, he had my words. He was fucking good. Mm. And then we played in a live game. Do you know about the live game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, and obviously the live game is huge. Yeah. And he was one of the standout players in that live game. And it was the first ever live game we did, even though we had others, but it was very unsuccessful. Mm. And I can go into that later. He was he had literally about 60 clubs after him after that game. Damn, he yeah. was exceptional. And I always pinched myself when I always said, he hollered at me, random guy, never had seen him before. Got hollered at me a snap and I told him to fuck off. Now I eat my words because yeah. he's fucking good. Yeah. So that that I think Yaku is good. I think in Nikki's generation, look, Nick Nikki will will be pissed with this. I would say <laughs> Nikki was good, but I always have had a soft spot for one player and that was Ezra. Okay. And um, if he's watching, then you know he knows how much I love him. Mm. Ezra is the most challenging footballer you will ever manage or work with. But blow boy, I loved him to bits because I saw his development from when he was a bit 
not the most techiest, then getting a scholar at Yeovil and seeing him like impress and he was good. It's such a shame that after he got released, he said football's not for him and he wanted to go into business. Yeah. But I miss I miss that. I miss him actually because I think he's, he was amazing. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, who would you say is your final uh, player if you could choose anyone? <sighs> Damn. Signs. Uh, ooh, everyone's going to kill me because I have to think on top of my head. Um, I would say Jeremy Sivy as well. Okay, yeah, nah. Because his story was a bit, yeah, a bit nah. sad, didn't yeah. it? Like, get released at late. Um, agent, again, not really supportive. Yeah. And Kyle, Kyle Roberts, yeah. who was at Mill at the time, called me and said, Alex, can you help this guy come out of Leighton? And I can't lie, at the first I was like... Ugh. I go and give me one boy from later. I'm sure this boy is good. Yeah. I looked at his footage, decent. And then I think he played in a live game, took him to Italy. Mm. Um, Italy just didn't work out, came back, um, then played in a live game. Middlesbrough picked him up. Um, I think Neil Warnock at the time, Middlesbrough watched the, the match and said, yep, I like him, we should sign him. And then he ends up getting signed in from, from Leighton Orient. Yeah. And I f- seem to be taking a lot of players from Leighton Orient, actually, and, and signing for top clubs. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's good, really. Yeah, no. Um, another question. What makes, like, for people that are going to, like, these showcase mm. academy games and trying to get these ID games in and trying to get seen, how would what would be the best advice for them? Because I'm just showing everyone that's watching probably wants to get how to be seen or how to be shown to get into academies from yeah. these games. I think you've got to be real to yourself. Like mm. for me, like obviously we did the live game. So live our live game is probably one of the most popular um games out there because mm. it is international. You're having scouts from all over the UK, international scouts watching, and we put everybody out there and we go through so example last year I think we had about three thousand applicants and we yeah. only shortlisted uh twenty seven and then I went down to about twenty. And that's what we shortlisted. And obviously, over the years, we get about 15 to 16 signings a year. But for me, one thing I will say is, one of the biggest things is when I see a player, and if I'm hollering at you as as onside saying, bro, I can help you. And then the player turns back and says, you're too far. You've lost it. That pains me the most. Yeah. You're, you're never too far to achieve the goal that you want to achieve. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a footballer, you would travel. We had a player two years ago travel all the way from um, uh, Nottingham to train at onside every weekend. Um, that was dedication. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. So you can understand what I mean. And it's always it's always seems to be our black brothers that do this nonsense. Yeah. You're you're good. Ah, oh, can't be asked to travel. Bro, you're 40 minutes. Ah, oh, you know. Da, da, da. Pick the right showcase academy as well. Pick for what they will do for you if it's development. Like for our training, we don't do tra- general training. We do a lot of role specific training. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when the players come to us, tactically they're not there, so we have to help them there. Technically, some technically you've got to be quite good to come to one side if you're technically good. Yeah. So that one, we don't really coach. That should be standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got, you, that's our standard. You have to be technically good. Yeah. Then it's the tactical side we start working with. We can work with the social. But me, I like mad players. I like players. <laughs> I like When people say, oh, Alex is a bad boy, I said, that's the ones I like. Mm. Because me, me, bad and bad, when we connect together, <laughs> exactly. somebody will win. Combination. The combination, when I combinate your head, you understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You understand. Yeah, and me, yeah. I'm strict. And I don't think I've had one player from onside that will say, oh, I don't like Alex. Even the bad players, do you get what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, 100%. So that's just the way it is. Yeah, and uh, I mean, a final question I would actually ask you, a bit of a, you know, a spicy one. Mm-hmm. But outside of onside, mm. who would you say in your eyes are like the top showcase team? So, you know, n- no kind of specific in terms of region, but like from what you've seen, teams you've faced, who would you say is like the top for you? Like, you know what? Fair Obviously, play. some have come and gone, yeah. but one, one number one is soccer base. Them mm. fuckers are real. Mm. Them fuckers are real. Mm. Like, I will tell people, go on YouTube, type in Onside, of, Onside Academy, Let's City Tournament. Mm. I haven't taken that that, that video down. Mm. It was hot video. When mm. I tell you, and I'll give you a story if you don't mind. Do I have yeah, enough time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, yeah, we got time still. Okay, so I'll tell you about this tournament, yeah. Obviously, we there was a little there was a little beef between me and uh, us and X Y Z. Yeah. There was a misunderstanding, like I said. 
So coming into it, we've taken some of their good players. Mm. They've got some of they've got some of our like good players. Like they've got good players anyway. Yeah. And remember, ESP was the place to go 100%. when you, especially from from East. North, South, everybody yeah, no. went there. You see them day alive or that evening <laughs> go and train. So obviously now, obviously there's a bit of argy bargy. So we haven't met. I haven't met them personally. I've never met them in their life. Yeah. But with Leicester Tournament, we go to Leicester Tournament now. Our guys, Hackney boys, you know how they are, innit? Some of them were a little bit more, a bit shook, but some of them were like, nah, we're gonna smoke these man. We play. I said to myself, I said, no, the fight's gonna kick off. Mm. 15 minutes in, boom, fight kicks off. Damn. They win, they they win, innit? I took it L. We went over. We blessed it after we shake hands, whatever. And then the, the second Leicester tournament, we came. I said, nah, I have to reinforce. When I tell you it was, it's still today one of the best matches to watch. It mm-hmm. was end to end. I remember we had, and I tell you, we had Thiago Gusto, who was at, he was at Sporting Lisbon. Yeah. We had uh, Darren Agu, who's now an NFL player now. Yeah, yeah. We had uh, Kwame. We had, uh, oh, man, we had Washington. We had Dylan Aboropoku. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just carry on, just carry on, just carry on, just carry on. So we had, we had mad players. Yeah. We had good players. Everyone just, yeah. we had Don Ray. Yeah, we had no. ballers. Yeah. Like, and these were players that in Hackney that they didn't take football seriously. It was just whatever. And we beat them. Yeah. So they won't beat us one. We beat us one, innit? And that win was good. And then we first sent them the other year and we beat them with our new squad. Mm. And then that Leicester tournament was always heated. And I love to me, I love the guys at ESP. I love the team they had. Yeah. Them guys knew how to field a team. Mm. It's not like all these useless showcase academies you're seeing now. They'll yeah. just field anything because yeah. they want. They knew how to fill the team. Yeah. So for me, I will have to say, at that time, ESB, I know ESB are doing other things at the moment, but ESB, see, I mean, I yeah. they were good yeah. at what they yeah. did. Most and definitely. I learned so much from them, how they did yeah. it, how to look at certain things. And maybe my strictness came from that as well. Yeah, almost okay. definitely. But, um, no, nah, it's been... A great episode. I wish we could go yeah. another we'll hour. Go we, we'll definitely do a part two, 100%. 100% because we got yeah. story. You got stories and stories. Oh, stories. I definitely. think the public will want to see this. But now, nah, appreciate it for coming on. Thank you, Alex, man. Because most definitely, everyone wanted to see this and we got it done. Exactly. But yeah, now nah, people as well, just like, comment, subscribe. We're trying to get up to 500 subscribers, people. Please just hit the subscribe. We'll take like two minutes. Yeah. Please just get it done for us, just for us people, because. We're trying to, we're trying to do, we're trying to elevate, we're trying yeah, to get the consistency. See, yeah, definitely. So listen, not to fear anybody in this game. Yeah, don't fear. That's what I'm saying. Because I, I wouldn't have achieved everything if I, if I didn't take chances. And like I said, guys, thank you for inviting me. No at the end of the day, so I want to leave it there. Just say, not to fear anybody. Yeah, yeah that's the word. But yeah, people, thank you. We're just gonna sign out now. But yeah, keep subscribing, like, comment, subscribing. Yeah, we'll be back for the next episode. Most definitely. Thank you.